Hi there, my name is Rosvan, and today I want to give you a quick introduction to CSS masking. CSS masking provides a way to tell the browser which parts of an element should be visible and which should be obscured. There are two ways of doing this, and both achieve similar results. Clipping and masking. So, clipping defines the area of an element which should be visible. Anything outside this area is invisible. Imagine cutting out a piece of paper. The result you get after throwing away the trimmings is equivalent to clipping. You're left with the visible part. Clipping is done with a set of predefined functions for circles, ellipses, which are basically squished circles, or polygons. There is also the option of using an SVG element as a clip path, but we're not going to cover that today. Let's jump to a quick demo. So, this is a quick example of a simple clip path. I have a regular image here in my HTML file, and right now it's clipped to an ellipse. If I turn off this clip path property, you see the original image I have. So it's similar to using border radius, but here you have the uh, ability to move the center of the ellipse around or to change its dimension. This is using a simple clip path. Let's go and try a polygon clip path. So this is an example I did earlier of an article about the trek. So I think you're immediately aware that we're doing something really interesting over here. So the title seems to come from behind the mountain. And it's not actually true. Uh, let's take a peek at the code here. So there is an h1 element over here and it has a clip path which makes it seem like it's obscured behind the mountain. If we turn off the clip path, of course the text is visible in front of our image. Let me just show you a quick uh, way to visualize the clip path on our element. So turning it back on, we have this clip path defined by some lime elements over here. So we're defining a, uh, a shape for the title to be visible and anything outside it is invisible. So whenever we turn on the page and we refresh the page, you get this very nice effect of the text flowing from behind the mountain. So this is a simple example of using clip path with a polygon. Okay. Let's jump back to masking. Masking is similar to clipping, but in this case, we use an image to define what is visible. There are two kinds of mask images. There's alpha and luminance. When using an alpha mask, the more transparent parts of the image are applied to the element. So where the mask is more transparent, the element will also be more transparent. Using a luminance mask, on the other hand, is like using a spotlight in a darkened room. Where the mask image is darker, the element will be less visible, so there's less light going on it. Conversely, where the mask image is brighter, the element will be more visible, so there's more light on it. Let's jump back to a uh, quick demo again. So, this is a very simple... Um, example of a uh, mask image. We have something similar to the clip path example earlier. However, this time we're using a PNG image with transparent bits to apply on top of our image onto the page. And if I turn it off, you can see the original image we have here. The main difference you see between clip paths and alpha um, or sorry, the, between clip paths and mask images is that you can get this gradient um, masking effect. For example, uh, going from uh, completely transparent to less transparent over a, a gradient uh, mask. I want to go back to the uh, tracking demo I showed you earlier. So over here we have uh, just a regular article that we you could find on the web and we want to enhance the visuals of this. So let's say we want to do a uh, mask on top of the uh, full bleed image we have over here. So 
We could uh, obviously use a PNG image, but we could also use linear gradients in CSS because these are essentially images for the browser. So over here we've applied a simple linear gradient from the top to the bottom. It doesn't really matter which colors it has because we're only looking at the transparency values. And just to show you that we're not faking this, I'm going to go ahead and change the background color of the page and you can see that our image is instantly updated with the gradient mask. Okay, um, this is a, a nice effect, so we can use PNG images or radial gradients, essentially images with transparency, and obviously it begs the question, what else can you use as a mask? Could you use an animated uh, image with transparency levels? And the answer is yes. So here's a quick example of using a... Uh, image of a uh, running cat, a GIF image, with uh, transparency levels. And because mask images are essentially uh, similar to background images, we can use similar properties to change the size of the background. So for example, here's the cat in uh, full size. And of course, if you're wondering if we can use multiple mask images together, the answer is right. Yes, we can. So this is uh, our cat running through our gradient and it's still masking the content of the page. And we can take this a step even further and let's make this header fixed position. So whenever I scroll the image now, the, the whole page, you, you see the text is going underneath the uh, header which is masked by the cat and the gradient. Now I think this is pretty cool. Of course, there's another option of using SVG elements to do a mask, but again, I'm not going to cover this in this video today. In terms of support, there's various levels of implementation of CSS masks across WebKit, in Blink, and in Firefox. And if you want to learn more about these levels of implementation and the features you can use, there's an excellent article written by one of my colleagues on HTML5 Rocks, which I highly encourage you to go ahead and read. It covers most of these examples and a lot more use cases for masks. And it, there's uh, also a bit in that article where you can learn about SVG masks and clip paths. So that's about it for this video today. If you have any questions, do give me uh, a tweet. And if you want to learn more about these cutting edge features, go ahead and visit html.adobe.com and you'll find a lot more examples of these kinds of features there. Thank you for watching.